Due to his old age, Maximus's internal strength base had stagnated. It wasn't that he didn't have the will or capacity to cultivate, but no matter how much he cultivated, his internal strength base would not improve. Yet because of the quantity of life flowers he had consumed, Maximus had now broken through to the late third level of the Holy Realm Outer Precinct. Maximus's gaze passed through several layers of space and landed in the deepest part of the Endless Abyss Forest. He thought to himself, After I consume the seven-colored flower of life, I will be able to advance to the peak third level. Then I can continuously recover my life force and eventually return to the inner precinct. With that, he once again entered secluded cultivation. Over the past few decades, nearly all the elders Maximus had met upon first entering the Damask village had passed away. The current elders were all from Arshad's generation, and Enrique was now considered middle-aged. Maximus's reputation in the village had solidified over time, and now the younger generations were born with an inbuilt reverence for him. These young people treated him as akin to a divine immortal. But Maximus was totally unmoved by such treatment. In fact, it was starting to wear thin on him. If it had not been for Arshad and his family, as well as the seven-colored flower of life, he would have left the village long ago. Lately, Maximus had been focused on aiding the cultivation of Enrique's young son and daughter. Both had tremendous potential. Maximus was confident they would reach the Sacred Combat Master Realm, or perhaps go even higher. As a result, Maximus took his role as mentor to these children quite seriously. The girl was named Naima, and the boy was named Driss. Both of them were young, hardly over ten, but had already become Tier 9 Battle Masters. Between the two, Maximus felt the stronger connection with Driss, for he could see the ambition in the boy's eyes. He knew he would never be satisfied with just being the leader of the village. And this was a good thing. Recently, the Damask village had attracted the attention of several major powers. And no matter how low-key the village attempted to remain, it could not help but grow in reputation and population. If the village continued to focus on self-preservation, they would definitely be besieged by those powerful forces. Yet Enrique was conservative in his approach and wouldn't dare to challenge the status quo in the village. Thus, in Maximus's eyes, it was Driss who had the potential to bring the village into a more glorious future. Now, the seven-colored flower of life was about to bloom. Maximus knew it would soon be time for him to leave. But before he did so, he wanted to nurture Driss's talent. Enrique had already cultivated to the half-step Sacred Combat Master level. If he went out to temper himself, he might have even been able to advance to the Divine Combat Master level. However, his whole identity was based on occupying the position of Village Chief, so he wouldn't dare depart the village even for a short amount of time. A year passed. Driss and Naima had broken through to the Earth Warrior realm and both requested permission from their father to leave the village and venture to the southern region to train. And though Enrique had no plans to venture beyond the village himself, he did not want to hold his children back. More broadly, several promising members of the younger generation had become deeply interested in venturing outside the village to cultivate and have adventures. Three years after Driss left the village, he advanced to the Divine Battle Master level. Ten years later, he became a Saint Battle Master and established his own One Star Sect, along with his sister, Naima. The pressure that the village faced was greatly reduced due to the establishment of the sect. Surely, competing powers wouldn't dare attack outright now that the village had a sect behind it. This sect known as the Ancient Gate Sect, eventually took on the Black Iron Tower, which was the entity controlling the region around the Damask Village. The Tower Master of the Black Iron Tower was no doubt strong, but Naima and Driss had at their disposal the Holy Realm techniques bestowed on them by Maximus. He had specially modified these techniques to make them more compatible with the youngsters. At first, the siblings were at a disadvantage. However, when Maximus taught the siblings, he also taught them the modified Holy Realm Ultimate techniques and modified them to suit the two of them. 
On the other hand, the Tower Master had used traditional methods to develop his combat techniques, which had been passed down to him by his ancestors. As a result, he had only about a 40% compatibility with these techniques. The moment the two siblings unleashed their combat techniques, the old Pagoda Master was destined to be defeated. After being stung by these youngsters, the old Tower Master immediately summoned his sworn brothers from his youth to help. All these warriors were at the sacred combat master level. Soon, the battle between the Black Iron Tower and the Ancient Gate sect was in a deadlock. However, as time passed and the strength of Driss and Naima continued to increase, the Black Iron Tower gradually fell into a disadvantageous position. Another few decades passed in the Damask Village. It had been a hundred years since Maximus arrived. Arshad and Luba had passed away, and Enrique had suffered a great blow because of his wife's death. Currently, the person in charge of the village was another chief, someone Maximus was not familiar with. Now, the Ancient Gate sect was like a beacon of strength, and it was extremely famous among the One Star powers. Many experts of the Divine Battlemaster level had joined in. Driss and Naima were quite busy. Every time they came to the village, they would visit with Maximus only quickly, as they had business to attend to with the village higher-ups. During this time, Maximus ventured cautiously into the Endless Abyss Forest. After a few days, he encountered a bloom seven-colored life flower. He could not help but smile. This rich life force, I think it will allow me to recover several hundred years of life force in one go, he muttered. With that, he harvested the flower and returned to the village, planning to immediately enter secluded cultivation. While Maximus was waiting to consume the seven-colored flower of life, an intense exchange was taking place in the meeting hall of the Black Iron Tower. A middle-aged man sat at the seat of honor with a frown on his face. He seemed to be in a dilemma. The surrounding experts all looked at him with worry and anticipation. This middle-aged man was the Tower Master, whose name was Lakdar Adair. He glanced at his companions, who were the higher-ups of the Tower, and commented, The Ancient Gate sect is powerful now, and they have as many sacred Battlemasters as we do. Plus, I am no match for those children of Enrique. I can only predict that in the near future, our Black Iron Tower will be destroyed or subsumed into their sect unless we figure out a new tactic. So, what should we do?" A sinister look flashed across the eyes of the Tower Master. He had underestimated his own strength and essentially ignored the rapid ascent of the Ancient Gate sect. Now, he felt the distinct likelihood that his tower would pay the price. Even the former Tower Master was shocked by this lack of foresight. Had Lakdar not foreseen the threat posed by Driss? Trying his best to suppress his boiling rage for Driss and Naima, he went on. We might not be able to do anything to those siblings, but surely we can attack their village. Everyone understood what Lakdar was planning, and although they found the approach rather shameless, given the current situation of the Black Iron Tower, they didn't feel as if they had much of a choice. Surely, if the faction fell, there was no way they would survive. A white-haired old woman said coldly, This method is feasible. This white-haired old woman had been one of the old Tower Master's companions when he was young. She was now known as Madame Purpleflower. Her face was hard and weathered, completely lacking in any sign of kindness. A large mole protruded from her left cheek. And recently, one of her personal disciples had been ruthlessly killed by Naima. She dreamed of enacting revenge and taking away someone who was important to the siblings. She thus requested to be a part of the vanguard of warriors attacking the village. Lakdar ordered two other saint combat masters to accompany her, and with that, the group flew to Damask Village. Along the way, Madame Purpleflower was deep in thought. She would not dare underestimate this village. For even though on the surface its strongest expert was only an Earth-level master, this place had produced Naima and Driss. Certainly, there was something exceptional about it. However, 
No matter how strong the village higher-ups were, she maintained a feeling of deep self-confidence. After Madame Purpleflower and the others left, the Black Tower launched an attack on the Ancient Gate sect in order to prevent the sect from discovering their plan. On the battlefield, Lakdar directly fought with Driss and his top generals. Black Fury skill! Lakdar shouted. Thick black smoke gushed from his body and transformed into all sorts of energy weapons. Driss harumphed, then stated, Lakdar, we have defeated you over and over. Why would you be able to turn the tables this time? Naima chimed in. Don't be careless. If you do, it's your people who will pay. Don't worry, I've learned my lesson, Lakdar stated in a grave tone. The black smoke blotted out the sun as it rolled across the sky. Driss and Naima both launched their strongest attacks. Battle Dragon Skyflyer, Driss shouted. The shadow of a savage beast appeared behind his back. It seemed to have come from ancient times, and it roared at Lakdar. What? Lakdar was shocked. Although he had been defeated last time, he had not expected to fall into a disadvantage so quickly. His pupils constrained as he stared at Naima and Driss, then ventured. The Intermediate Saint Warrior Realm. When did you advance to this point? It had taken the siblings several decades to reach this point, but in the context of the 2,000-year lifespan of a Divine Battlemaster, this was nothing. Lakdar was sent flying with a single punch. He was in an extremely miserable state. Driss laughed, then commented, Previously, the two of us had to work together in order to defeat you. Now we can defeat you alone. Sister, go and deal with the others. Leave Lakdar to me. Naima nodded. She added softly, Don't be careless. Madame Purpleflower is not here, which is strange. Some scheme is likely afoot. Ha ha ha! Upon hearing Naima's words, Lakdar burst into laughter. Despite his sorry state, he had a gloating expression on his face. What are you laughing at? Driss spat out. Lakdar smiled with a hideous expression, then went on. Do you want to know where Madame Purpleflower went? She went to the Damask Village to avenge her disciple, along with several other divine battlemasters. Your village is finished. Your home is finished. He then stared at the two of them, wanting to see despair and anger on their faces. But he had miscalculated. His heart sank. He didn't see what he wanted to see at all. He only saw that the two of them were shocked at first, but then calmed down. The corners of their mouths curled up, making him feel irritated. Aren't the two of you worried? Lakdar pressed in a tone of panic. I'm worried. Why wouldn't I be worried? But I'm worried about Madame Purpleflower, not the village. Naima declared calmly, smiling at the same time. Over the last few years, the siblings had realized how abnormal the contract techniques bestowed upon them by Maximus were. In fact, they had been able to use these techniques to fight against opponents who were at a much higher level than they. They had thus come to see Maximus as a figure of mythic, otherworldly power. Surely he was above the Saint Combat Master realm. That is to say, he could likely easily deal with the likes of Madame Purpleflower and her compatriots. Driss clapped his hands and laughed aloud, then stated, That's great! This is the day the Black Iron Tower will fall! A look of regret finally appeared on Lakdar's face. What he had expected to be a day of triumph looked like it would in fact end up a day of tragedy. The battle ended decisively in Naima and Driss's favor, but they had no interest in expanding their territory and becoming a two-star power. If they did, it would no doubt attract the attention and hostility of other powerful entities. And right now, it wasn't a good time to start a war. Driss, let's go back to the village, Naima suggested, and they were off. Although they had always believed in Maximus' strength, they couldn't suppress a desire to see for themselves that their home was okay. Meanwhile, Madame Purpleflower and her retinue had finally arrived at the Damask Village. All of them had ferocious expressions. Her aura burst out and quickly surrounded the entire Village.
The villagers looked at the figures floating in the air in shock. They broke out in confused speculation. What happened? A middle-aged woman declared. This pressure, I can't breathe, added her companion. There's someone strong attacking, an old man chimed in. Many of the young people in the village had gone out on adventures over the past few years. Some had died in distant lands, some had joined the Ancient Gate sect, and some had returned to the village. They had now mostly reached middle age and were the backbone of the village. Their powers of perception had been owned by experience. A heavenly battle master, declared one in a decisive tone. Most of them had broken through to the earth battle master level, but in front of divine battle masters, this level was nothing. Madame Purple Flower enjoyed the despair of these people. Her hoarse voice echoed throughout the village. Holy people, after you go to hell, blame Driss and Naima, she declared. After pausing for effect, she commanded, Kill them all! Instantly, more than ten figures charged into the crowd. The Damask Village's Earth-level warriors gritted their teeth and resisted the aura's pressure. Even if it meant they would lose their lives, they would not give up. Yet the Black Iron Tower experts rushed into the crowd like wolves moving through a flock of sheep. They were unafraid and clearly the aggressors. In the blink of an eye, many Earth Warriors were seriously injured. Meanwhile, Madame Purple Flower laughed wildly in the sky. And at the same moment, Maximus returned from gathering seven colored flowers of life. He took in the seam rapidly, like a camera, and his face immediately darkened. His soul turned into a sharp sword and stabbed at the Divine Battlemasters. Seconds later, they all fell to the ground lifeless. What? What's going on? Madame Purple Flower widened her eyes. This scene was unbelievable. Then, she saw an old man walking over to her at a deliberate pace. His skin was wrinkled and his hair was pale and dull, but the intensity of his gaze made her shiver. Just looking at him, she felt like she had fallen into an ice cellar. The villagers erupted into commentary again. It's Lord Maximus, a young girl shouted. Maximus has made his move. We are saved, another added. These people are finished, a third concluded. Who, oh, who are you? Madame Purple Flower ventured in a calm tone, suppressing the fear in her heart. You don't deserve to know. Maximus uttered. You've attacked the people of my village, and you will pay with your life. Maximus didn't waste any time. He stretched out his hand and made a grabbing gesture in the void. Madame Purple Flower was horrified to find that her body was being squeezed by an irresistible force. No! She shrieked, but it was too late. She became unconscious, then fell lifelessly to the ground. Run! The two other Saint Masters were so scared that their souls almost left their bodies. They cursed Madame Purple Flower and Lakdar in their hearts. If it weren't for them, they wouldn't have fallen into such a terrifying situation. Maximus watched indifferently as the two Saint Combat Masters escaped. He didn't make any movements, only opening the astral pupil between his brows. In the next moment, the villagers gasped as the two Saint Combat Masters fell down from the sky. The current village chief swallowed hard and mustered his courage to run over. He discovered that these two saint combat masters couldn't be more dead. Those earth-level combat masters who had gone beyond the village to cultivate could not help but sigh. For given their experience in the outside world, they now understood that Maximus's strength was in its own category, beyond comprehension. Perhaps he was not even from this continent. In his wooden house, Maximus began to consume the seven colored life flowers. Immediately, a large amount of life force entered his body, restoring his lifespan. 10 years, 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. In just one day, Maximus had recovered several hundred years of his life force. Adding the life force he had accumulated after consuming the other life flowers, he had recovered nearly a thousand years of life. Now his internal strength base had gone back up to the peak third level of the Outer Precinct. Yet still, he could not help but remain fixated on returning to the Inner Precinct realm. It's time to leave the village, he muttered to himself with a sigh. 
Just as Maximus was about to leave, Driss and Naima arrived at the village in an agitated state and learned everything from the current village chief. The two of them looked at each other. Sure enough, Lord Maximus wasn't an ordinary expert. The siblings requested an audience with Maximus in his wooden house. After hearing what they had to propose, he raised his eyebrows and pressed. You want me to join the Ancient Gate sect? Driss quickly explained. Yes, but not only you. I'd like the rest of the villagers to come too. What happened today is a dramatic reminder of the village's vulnerability. I don't want my family so exposed to hostile forces. Maximus demurred. I'm afraid I can't comply with your request. Driss turned pale with fright, then ventured. My lord, you want to leave us? Naima was also anxious. No matter how hard they struggled outside, they would always remember that they had family members supporting them. This was the source of their strength. Every time they were tired of fighting, as long as they thought of their family members, they would be full of motivation. But now their grandparents and parents were gone. Only Maximus was left of their family. The prospect of losing him was more than they could bear. Seeing the panic in their faces, Maximus shook his head and laughed. He assured them, You are both already Saint Combat Masters. Why do you need me at this point? Naima explained, feeling wronged. You are about to leave. How can we be calm? Driss's expression changed, and he offered, Maximus, during this period of time, I have gathered quite a few life-extending spirit fruits from the outside world. I want you to have them. I insist. Consider it a gift. Maximus was moved, even though he knew this was perhaps all a ploy to get him to stay. All right, I'll follow you guys to the Ancient Gate sect, but I still have to leave after obtaining the spirit fruits, Maximus stated reluctantly. Driss and Naima nodded like a couple of excited children. When they returned to the sect territory, Maximus found that the spirit fruit Driss had gathered to prolong his life were of a high quality. They were at least at the level of the seven-color life flower. Some were even stronger. Driss licked his lips, then ventured. Maximus, it has taken me decades to collect this many spirit fruits. If you venture out at this point, it will take you just as long. Why not just take these and stay here to consume them? Naima hurriedly chimed in. Yeah, this will save you so much time. And while you are here, you'll have an army of subordinates ready to help you seek out additional spirit fruits and herbs. This time, Maximus didn't insist on leaving. Instead, he started to think seriously. The Ancient Gate sect wasn't weak among the one-star powers of the Battle Spirit continent. Surely some of the disciples would be experts at tracking spirit fruits that could restore his lifespan. Furthermore, the information and know-how of a group of locals was not something he could approximate on his own. Thinking of this, Maximus nodded slowly and said, All right, I'll stay here for now. Driss and Naima looked at each other in pleasant surprise. They had pressed Maximus to stay not only because they considered him family, but also because they hoped to receive his guidance. Driss wanted to give over one of the sect's most luxurious villas to Maximus, but Maximus refused. He only wanted to find a quiet and remote place to cultivate. This time, Driss didn't refute Maximus. He found a relatively quiet courtyard house for him and designated it a forbidden area so that he would not be disturbed. Maximus flicked his finger and set up a spatial barrier around him. It's safer this way. This is a hand seal. You can enter and exit this barrier as you wish, he explained. He then smiled and added, You see, I want you to share in this cultivation space. Use it to improve your strength as my mentees. Driss and Naima were overjoyed. This was essentially a stamp of approval from Maximus and a guarantee that he would support their advancement well into the future. After that point, no one in the Ancient Gate sect dared to approach the courtyard house where Maximus was cultivating. No one dared to disrespect this mysterious figure who was above the sacred battlemaster level. Tens of years passed in the blink of an eye. 
During this decade, the members of the Ancient Gates sect had found many life-prolonging spirit fruit treasures for Maximus, and they were of different types. This would reduce the likelihood that any one of these resources would lose their potency due to overconsumption. They would do anything to assure Maximus's continued presence here, as they saw this as their best bet for advancing to the two-star level. In the past ten years, other than Driss, Naima, and the other people who had given Maximus spirit fruits, no one had seen Maximus before. Maximus hadn't even taken a step out of the barrier. In the courtyard house, although Maximus's skin was still old, it was no longer as dry as before. Now it had some elasticity, and his glow was returning. Further, his hair was now regaining its black hue, and it was stronger and silkier. In these past years, Maximus had recovered about 700 to 800 years of his lifespan. Ten years ago, Driss and Naima had both broken through to the peak of the Divine Battlemaster realm. After Driss married, he left the Ancient Gates sect to travel and seek opportunities to break through to the Golden Divine Battlemaster realm. The progress of Driss's and Naima's internal strength base had attracted the attention of the experts of the Ancient Gates sect. Unfortunately, they didn't have the courage to seek guidance from Maximus. Furthermore, even if they had the courage, they wouldn't be able to enter the inner part of the barrier without the seal. Another few decades passed. Driss's descendants had grown, and a new generation of leaders had emerged. Further, the story of Maximus was gradually being recorded in the sect almanacs. Now, only the most ancient elders really knew him personally. The others considered him a legend. Still, no one was interested in the forbidden area that Maximus was cultivating in. Even though some of the younger generation were curious about it, they didn't dare act on their impulses. At the same time, as Maximus continued to process the information he had learned about the Battle Energy Continent while cultivating, he was more and more convinced that it was not useful to him to stay here for he had deduced that there were essentially no presences here at the demigod or god-king level. What was the use of gathering resources here if he could do better in the Forgotten Continent? It was precisely because of this that Maximus gave up the idea of searching for the combat gods for it seemed clear that none of them would know about the process of ascending to the continent of the gods. Maximus mused to himself, The battle energy continent is not up to par, even with the forgotten continent. If I stay here, who knows when I'll be able to break through to the true god realm. When Lord Flame wakes up, I'll continue to travel through the starry sky to other planes of reality. With these thoughts in mind, he quietly waited for his internal strength base to return to the inner precinct and for Lord Flame to wake up. Driss returned twenty years later from his internal strength quest. He had broken through to the Golden Saint Combat Master level. However, Naima did not return. When Maximus greeted Driss, the man was in sorrow. He spoke of the fact that Naima had fallen in a secret realm, never to be heard from again. Maximus, too, was heartbroken. The path of internal strength was filled with danger. No one could walk steadily and peacefully. Although the death of Naima had made Maximus feel devastated, he knew he couldn't blame the secret realm or Driss. Cultivate well and do your sister's memory justice, Maximus advised, patting Driss's shoulder. Driss nodded while choking with sobs. Maximus let out a long sigh. He understood what was going on. Given their mutual ambitions, Driss and Naima had been closer than ordinary siblings. They were like two halves of a whole. Now that Naima had fallen, Maximus could tell that Driss could not take this level of ambition anymore. He was afraid that he would stop at the Golden Saint Battlemaster level in the future. At the same time, Driss was the true foundation of the Ancient Gate sect and if he did not aspire toward greater heights, there was no way the sect could advance. Over the next few months, Driss secured a two-star standing for his Ancient Gate sect. Then he went into seclusion, never coming out again. As time passed, Driss was forgotten by most of the people in the sect. 
Only the upper echelons of the door of the ancient realm still remembered their founder. The grass grew and generations of birds left their nest. More than a hundred years passed just like that. Driss's descendants had become the strongest force in the Ancient Gate sect, and the sect was flourishing. One day, a young man in his late teens was looking enviously at the more mature warriors in the martial arts training arena. This man's name was Yassin, and he was a direct descendant of Driss. However, from the moment he was born, he had been considered weak, and it was widely believed that he would never be able to cultivate to become a powerful combat master. And at this point, only the strong were truly valued in the Ancient Gate sect. Despite being constantly belittled, Yassin had done his best to cultivate, even though he was still a grade one combat master at this point. The second level felt as far away to him as another galaxy. Could it be that I can only stay at the first grade combat master for the rest of my life? No, I refuse to accept this. I refuse to accept my fate. Yassin roared in his heart, his despair turning into steely resolve. Not long after, the training time in the martial arts field came to an end, and the young martial artists came out one after another. They were not surprised to see Yassin there. Every day, he would stand at the perimeter and study them closely. A tall, muscular young man shoved him to the side and lashed out. Pathetic. If you can't cultivate your body, why don't you just stay in your room and twiddle your thumbs? The taunting boy then broke out in laughter. Another disciple countered. Shh, lower your voice. Yassin is the grandson of the sect master, and he is also the direct descendant of the founder of our sect. We can't afford to offend him. Yassin had a bitter expression on his face. Even if his internal strength talent was poor, he wouldn't complain like a child. So he simply walked away. He was so deeply lost in thought that he had wandered beyond his neighborhood and found himself in an entirely unfamiliar place. He was shocked. Was this some sort of forbidden area of the sect? When he was young, his father had specifically warned him not to enter a certain district, for this is where a super expert dwelled. It's just a rumor. If there was a super expert, he wouldn't have stayed in this place for so many years, Yassin muttered to himself. But then he second-guessed himself. Wait, I thought all forbidden areas were covered in barriers. How did I walk in just like that? In his wooden house, Maximus's internal strength base had recovered to the limit of the outer precinct's third level. He could clearly feel that the inner precinct was right in front of him, but he still felt that something was missing. It's still the issue of life force. After losing so much life force, the inner precinct feels out of reach, he mused in deep frustration. However, thinking about the benefits of breaking through, Maximus could only restrain himself and endure the boredom. It had never taken him this long to move from one realm to another. At this moment, however, his thoughts were torn away from cultivation. Someone had broken through the barrier he had set up. He had noticed it right away. When he saw that this person who had broken into his barrier was only a young man in his teens, and that it was someone who had barged in unconsciously, Maximus's face was filled with shock. But soon after, he was filled with interest. Supporting his chin with his hand, Maximus stated in a low voice, Interesting, interesting. Given the nature of this barrier, no one below the War Sovereign Realm would be able to barge in here. The corner of Maximus's mouth curled into a smile as he waved his sleeve. Yassin, who was standing outside, disappeared from where he stood. When he reappeared, he was already in front of Maximus. Yassin was so scared that he almost wet his pants. Brat, you're so timid, yet you dare to come into my barrier? Maximus commented with mock seriousness. Yassin's mouth opened wide when he thought of the legend of the Forbidden Area. The legend was actually true. There really was an extremely powerful existence hidden there. Thinking of this, he immediately knelt down and ventured. Greetings, my lord. I assure you, I wandered in here totally by mistake. I would never offend you, sir. Yassin's heart was in turmoil. No one in the outside world knew about the experts in the Forbidden Area. 
He also had no idea what kind of temper this super genius had. Maximus saw Yassine's nervousness and offered with a smile. Trust me, if I wanted to punish you, I would have. I summoned you here, young man. When Yassine heard this, he immediately calmed down. Then he respectfully queried, May I know why you did so, sir? Maximus waved his hand and asked Yassine to come closer, then explained, It's nothing major. I just wanted to know how you passed through the barrier I set up. At the same time, the curiosity in Maximus's eyes intensified. Yassine also thought of the strange things that had just happened. He had entered in a daze. He had thought that the old man had done it on purpose, but now it seemed like that was not the case. He thought to himself, Could it be that there is in fact something special about me? Maybe I'm not just trash like all the others say. Maximus didn't waste any time. He pointed his finger at Yassine and stopped him. After that, he placed his palm on Yassine's body, and at the same time, he carefully inspected him with his primordial spirit power. Not long after that, a trace of shock flashed across Maximus's face. Due to his relatively limited knowledge of the battle energy continent, he didn't know exactly what kind of physique this was, but it was something extraordinary, definitely beyond the holy level, and most likely at the divine grade. Heavens, hasn't the battle energy continent declined? Why, why would such a physique appear here? Maximus mused to himself as he sucked in a breath of cold air. But after thinking about it a bit more, Maximus had a clearer picture of what had happened. Clearly, as a complete plane of reality, the battle energy continent had the potential to produce more geniuses than the forgotten continent. It was just that they had developed a quite inefficient way of advancing internal strength base, in which combat techniques had to be passed down from one generation to another. This delayed the process of top geniuses ascending to the divine grade. After a long while, Yassine couldn't help but ask, But what's so special about… Maximus interrupted. Although your bloodline and aptitude aren't high, your special physique is exceptional. Special physique? Yassine repeated in utter confusion. He clearly wanted to understand. Maximus was indifferent as he calmly went on. Special constitutions require special internal strength methods. In short, you need to discover the power of your special constitution. Once you discover it, your strength will increase extremely quickly, completely unrestricted by your qualifications. Of course, if your aptitude increases, it can also help your special physique cultivate faster. Yassine was stunned for a moment, and then he couldn't help but declare excitedly, Sir, do you mean that my special physique can help me break through to the second grade? Second grade? Maximus repeated, shaking his head dramatically. You're kidding. Your special physique is strong. You can become a saint warrior master in the future. I, I, I... Yassine struggled to find the words. His eyes were wide open, now filled with a glimmer of hope. From the moment he was born, Yassine's body had been judged to be poor. It was thought his talent was not high and he had not achieved much in the area of internal strength. This news thus seemed surreal to him, like it was happening to someone else. He went on. Sir, what should I do to cultivate my special physique? Please, teach me. Yassine was so excited that he felt as if he was going to crawl out of his skin. However, Maximus's voice was extremely serene as he advised. It is fate that we met. If you hadn't accidentally passed through my barrier, I wouldn't have noticed you. All of this is destined by the heavens. Your special constitution is strong, but I can only help you discover a part of it. The rest will depend on you. Come back in three days." Maximus waved his sleeve and sent Yassine out of the barrier. He had already memorized some information about Yassine's special physique. His mind began to spin rapidly creating internal strength methods based on this information. Outside the barrier, Yassine suppressed his excitement and ran back to his residence like the wind. Yassine wished he could roar at the sky. Finally, he could cultivate. It was all too much. Three days later, Yassine returned to Maximus's place. This time, he was no longer in a daze. 
He carefully observed how he passed through the barrier. Could this have something to do with my special physique? He asked himself. Yassine's face was filled with surprise and expectation, as well as some uneasiness. Once he had reached Maximus's chamber, Maximus pointed his finger at Yassine. All of a sudden, a great deal of information appeared in his mind. Maximus explained, This is a combat technique that I created by researching your special physique. After cultivating this combat technique, as long as you fully comprehend it, you should be able to discover 70% to 80% of your special physique. As for the rest, you will have to rely on yourself. The same goes for your aptitude. Yassine was immersed in the sea of internal strength methods. When he heard this, his expression became solemn. He stated, You have done so much, and I will not forget it. Trust me, in the future, I will find a way to repay you. Forget about repaying me. If you really want to repay me, then contribute to the Ancient Gate sect, Maximus protested. To Maximus, creating such a combat technique wasn't a strenuous task. The reason why he did this was because he cherished Yassine's talent. He didn't want such a genius to be delayed by the internal strength methods of the Battle Energy Consonant. Secondly, Yassine came from the Ancient Gate sect, which Maximus considered his unofficial home on this continent. Thirdly, Maximus was interested in Yassine's special physique. He really wanted to see how much Yassine would grow and what level his special physique could reach. To put it bluntly, Maximus was a little bored, and this project was a great distraction. Yassine's face was still solemn as he declared, No matter what, it was you who gave me hope. I will repay you, trust me. Uh, whatever you want to do, Maximus muttered. At the end of the year, the competition for young disciples of the Ancient Gate sect started. Yassine was the dark horse, and no one had noticed him, until the second round when he had unexpectedly defeated his opponent and advanced. On the viewing platform, all the higher-ups took a deep breath. Yassine had advanced to the ninth level by now. The speed of this advancement was too shocking. Yassine's current opponent was a famous genius of the younger generation of the Ancient Gate sect. His facial expression couldn't help but change. He challenged. Huh, so what if you've reached the ninth grade? I have been at that level for years, and I have reached the peak. I am close to becoming an Earth Warrior. You can't defeat me. The prize for the champion of this competition was an Earth Star pill. After swallowing it, one would immediately be able to break through to the rank of Earth Battle Master. This was a mind-blowing prospect. The higher-ups on the platform did not hide their doubt. But to their great shock, Yassine's aura increased rapidly and soon surpassed the ninth grade. Thousand palms! Yassine shouted in a low voice. His palms struck out fiercely, and the space was filled with after-images of his hand. It was as if he had really struck out with a thousand palms. His opponent began to gasp for breath as he was sent flying. No one had seen it coming, but Yassine had taken the championship. On the high platform, the current sect master, Yassine's grandfather, declared in a deep voice, My grandson, how did you improve so much in such a short period of time? Could it be that you have become a demon? In the battle energy continent, some combat techniques were filled with demonic nature and could cause one's strength to soar. However, the result was that the cultivator ultimately lost his reason and became a demon. The current sect master did not want his grandson to rely on such combat techniques to increase his strength. Facing the doubts and vigilance of the crowd, Yassine offered unhurriedly, Grandpa, I received the guidance of the genius in the forbidden area. That's why I was able to quickly increase my strength. Following Yassine's explanation, everyone was dumbfounded. Yassine actually had a special constitution in his body? The younger generation was perplexed, but the sect elders knew well what this meant. I see, I see, the sect master mused. If it was Maximus who said it, I know it must be true. While the higher-ups felt some relief at the revelation of Yassine's special physique, the younger generation was in an uproar. 
the rumors of the forbidden area were actually true. In the next moment, many jealous gazes fell upon Yasin. This kid had actually received the guidance of that legend. It was unfathomable. On the high platform, the current sect chief welcomed the envious eyes of the elders. Any one of them could have advised their children or grandchildren to seek out the advice of the super genius in the forbidden area. It was not his purview alone. After all, Maximus's record as an advisor was unimpeachable. Driss was now a golden saint battlemaster. Yassine had risen to the ninth grade in a few short months. Although Naima had fallen, she had essentially been a match for Golden Saint Battlemaster opponents. At the same time, many of the elders had tried themselves to enter the barrier, but had been summarily rejected. Clearly, there was some selectivity as to whom Maximus offered guidance. In Maximus's wooden house, Yassine had once again come to express his gratitude. He stated in a beseeching tone, I want to go to a stronger power to cultivate. Do you think it will work? Maximus nodded, then explained. The ancient gate's sex foundation is too weak after all. You should seek out a three-star or four-star power, I agree. Only now did Yassine feel relieved. Not long after, the news of Yassine passing the four-star disciple test of the Southern Domain's Purple Mansion sect and becoming a disciple of that sect spread to his home domain. It caused a sensation. After all, there were very few four-star sects in the continent, and so the Purple Mansion sect was considered a top power. Though the Ancient Gates sect higher-ups were resentful of Yassine's success, they also knew that this alliance with the Purple Mansion sect would increase the prestige of their own sect. Even Driss, who had gone into indefinite seclusion, was shaken by the news that his great-grandson had received guidance from Maximus with stunning results. He temporarily left his secluded mountain cave to advise Yassine. Go with confidence. Make a name for yourself in the Purple Mansion sect. You must save face. Yassine solemnly nodded. For the next few decades, shocking news about Yassine continually rocked the Ancient Gate sect. Yassine had broken the Purple Mansion sect's record of the fastest advancement to Inner Sect Disciple, then the record for fastest advancement to Core Disciple. He had become a Divine Battlemaster at less than 20 years old. And less than a decade later, he became a Golden Divine Battlemaster. It was widely believed that Yassine was being nurtured to assume the role of Sekmaster in the future. Fulfilling his promise to Maximus, Yassine sent a great deal of pills and other resources back to the Ancient Gate sect. The sect benefited tremendously, with several elders reaching the peak of Saint Combat Master designation and even becoming Golden Saint Combat Masters. Further, Driss had broken through to the Combat God level. Soon, the Ancient Gate sect had become a three-star power. However, the sect higher-ups were well aware that their foundation was too weak, and the number of golden and sacred battlemasters was too low. Their true inherent strength was not even equivalent to that of a two-star power. Yassine had also brought a lot of resources to Maximus. He was appreciative, even though his internal strength level was so high that they ultimately proved useless to him. In the end, Maximus gave these pills to Driss, and he in turn assured that several saint combat masters were nourished in the Ancient Gate sect. On the other hand, Maximus kept some of the pills that could prolong one's life and used them to restore his life force. Soon, Maximus had determined that he was on the verge of returning to the inner precinct. He redoubled the barrier around him. Now it was so strong that even Driss couldn't enter. Another ten years had passed, and the Ancient Gate sect had fallen into chaos. Yassine had been expelled from the Purple Mansion sect, for he had offended a five-star level power called the Thunder Flame sect. The forces that had been jealous of the Ancient Gate sect for the past few decades were all gloating over their misfortune and kicking them while they were down. In a short period of time, the sect was completely deserted. Eventually, only the higher-ups of the Ancient Gate sect still stood on Yassine's side. His peers from the younger generation had cursed him. In the Ancient Gate sect, 
Yassin was lying on his bed with a pale face. The higher-ups of the ancient sect and Driss were silent. Beside the bed, a beautiful girl looked at Yassin with tears in her eyes. It's all my fault for dragging him down, she cried. Driss sighed and commented, Soria, this was Yassin's choice. If you continue to feel guilty like this, he will only feel worse. After a moment of silence, Soria's tone carried a trace of firmness. Since Shaden of the Thunderflame sect has taken a fancy to me, I'll just marry him as long as he lets Yassin go. Soria was a prominent member of the Purple Mansion sect, whom Yassin had quickly fallen in love with. Soria, too, had a special constitution, and this attracted many suitors, including Shaden Burke, who was powerful and ruthless and wanted to attain Soria's constitution for himself. Yassin had reacted immediately, challenging Shaden to a battle in which he had seriously injured his opponent. Shaden was the son of the current sect master of the Thunderflame sect. Although his talent was good, he was not passionate about internal strength. He had just reached the Saint Battlemaster level, so he was no match for Yassin with his special physique. After suffering such a humiliating defeat, how could Shaden not take revenge? He immediately used his father's power to force the Purple Mansion sect to give up on Yassin and eject him from the sect. On his journey outward in shame, Yassin had been attacked by Shaden and several of his followers at the Saint Battlemaster level. Yet Yassin had deployed his special physique, scaring Shaden away. Still, he was seriously injured in the process. But now that they were at Yassin's bedside and Soria had made her shocking declaration, Driss could not help but protest. No, you will not marry Shaden. He is not a good man. Eventually, he will harm you. Soria bit her lips as she pressed. Then what should we do? However, at this moment, the sky changed color. Dark clouds rolled and thunder rumbled. A flame-like dragon began to weave through the clouds. Then a powerful aura slammed into the ancient gate sect like a massive wave. He's coming, Soria blurted. This was the arrival of Shaden's revenge. Driss and the others looked at each other with serious expressions. Now, they could only fight with all their might. In the sky above the ancient gate realm, an old man was standing in the air. Next to him was a young man who looked about 27 or 28 years old. He was staring at the sect territory fiercely. A mere three-starred lowly being from a third-starred faction dares to disobey my orders? I'll kill you today, the young man Shaden declared while gnashing his teeth. He had twice been forced to run away, and the humiliation had moved him to unprecedented rage. The old man next to Shaden smiled faintly, then offered, Don't worry, young master. A mere three-star power can be destroyed with the flick of my hand. <laughs> then I'll have to thank you, Lord Burning Spirit, Shaden smugly stated. At this moment, Driss and the others who had just arrived gasped when they heard the old man's name. It's, it's the Burning Spirit Warlord, Driss muttered to himself. The rest of the elders' faces did not look good either. They were determined to fight to the death, but the reality was there was only four or five true battlemasters among them. However, the Burning Spirit Warlord was one of the top existences among the War Sovereigns. He was among a group called the Eight, who were considered the top forces in the Thunderflame sect. Further, the Burning Spirit Warlord was legendary for having been born with a strange flame that no one fully understood, even to this day. Driss smiled bitterly. The Ancient Gate sect was only a three-star power. Was there really a need to send a force like the Burning Spirit Warlord after them? This seemed excessive, certainly calibrated to send a message. But what he didn't know was that Shaden was afraid of Yassin. Despite his superior strength, he had not been able to defeat this competitor for Soria's love, and this bewildered and upset him. Burning Spirit Warrior, don't destroy them all at once. That won't be fun. I want to watch them die in despair. Shaden seethed. Hearing this, the Burning Spirit Lord furrowed his brows. He had always been quick at killing people, and he hated delaying the inevitable. 
However, Shaden's father was the current sect master of the Thunderflame sect, and he was also a legendary battle god expert. He was also ranked 27th on the Warlord list, and he was extremely powerful. Concerned about Shaden's father, the Burning Spirit Warrior did not refute. A moment later, Driss and the rest of the Elder's bodies twisted and fell to the ground. Their auras were withered, and each and every one of them suffered. Soria ran forth, gritted her teeth, and knelt on the ground, then pleaded with Shaden. As long as you let the people of the Ancient Gate sect go, I will marry you. Shaden laughed coldly, then countered. Nonsense! No matter what, you will be mine. So why should I keep these bastards alive? Soria suddenly took out a dagger and put it to her neck. She threatened. I'll kill myself. Don't test me. Shaden's face was ashen. Suddenly, a voice rang out from behind Soria. This stops here. Soria turned around and struggled to utter, Yasin. Yasin staggered over and declared, If you want to die, we will die together. We will not allow you to be ruined by that scum. How dare you call me scum? Shaden shot back. He paused for effect, then continued. Burning spirit warlord, I'm tired of talking to them. Kill them all. But of course, spare Soria. The flames around the burning spirit war sovereign surged wildly, and powerful auras wreaked havoc on the landscape below like ocean waves. However, at this moment, an earth-shattering and shocking aura rushed out from a remote section of the ancient god realm. The auras formed a storm and engulfed the dark clouds in the sky. In a short period of time, all the dark clouds, lightning, and fire dragons in the void were devoured by the aura. An energy beam then shot into the sky, causing the void to shake. It was as if the end of the world had arrived. Waves of energy surged out violently, each higher than the last. The burning spirit divine lord's face froze. To his shock, he discovered that he had been locked down by an incomparably powerful aura, and his body was unable to move at all. Shaden was so scared that he wet his pants. This, this aura, it's impossible, he struggled with his words. Shaden's father was a legendary battle god. How could Shaden not know what this aura meant? The burning spirit warrior also said with difficulty, A legendary war god is breaking through! Nobody had expected that the lowly ancient door sect would have such a figure hidden in its ranks. Currently, only five-star factions and rogue cultivators were known to have war gods in their ranks. There were no more than 50 in the entire battle energy continent. Shaden had only one impulse, to flee. But he soon found his body was frozen and he couldn't move at all. Yasin, too, was shocked. He stared blankly at the point from which the aura had emerged. He could sense immediately that the powerful outpouring had come from none other than Maximus, and surely he was more powerful than they had ever imagined. After recovering from their shock, Yasin and the elders were filled with pleasant surprise. With a senior combat god here, the puny burning spirit warlord was nothing. The ancient gate sect was now safe. Among the people present, Perhaps only Driss could remain calm, for he had long guessed that Maximus' strength was at the war god level. A human figure slowly stepped out from the aura storm in the void. This human figure had an aged face, and his white hair was mixed with some black hair. Yet as he walked forward, his face seemed to become ever more youthful. By his tenth step, he had taken on the look of someone in their twenties. This was, of course, the beautiful Maximus. He stated to no one in particular, I finally returned to the inner precinct. I have a 16,000 year lifespan and I still have 12,000 years left. Soon, I will return to a state of eternal youth. Maximus felt the vigorous life force in his body that he hadn't felt for a long time. He couldn't help but let out a long roar and the void shattered in an instant. After returning to the inner precinct level, Maximus' Saint Origin solidification speed rapidly recovered and stabilized. Yasin and the others stared at Maximus blankly. So this was what he looked like when he was young? 
Maximus surveyed his surroundings. His eyes gradually turned cold as he looked at the Burning Spirit Warlord. In an instant, the Burning Spirit Warlord felt as if he had fallen into an ice cellar. An incomparably terrifying killing intent enveloped him, as if a huge mountain of energy was pressing down on his body. Despite being one of the eight warlords of the Thunderflame sect and a figure of unparalleled power, the Burning Spirit Warlord had no choice but to lower his proud head in the face of an even stronger legendary war god. You two want to destroy the Ancient Gate Realm? Maximus asked coldly. Although Maximus had been in focused seclusion, it was not like he had been unaware of what was happening outside. However, when the Burning Spirit Warlord arrived, Maximus was already on the verge of breaking through. A trace of his divine spirit had accidentally leaked out, so he naturally saw everything. It was just that he was at the critical moment of breaking through. Maximus could only watch helplessly as Driss was seriously injured. He was unable to make a move in time. Sir, I... The Burning Spirit Warlord struggled to find the words, revealing a smile that was uglier than crying but he cursed Shaden in his heart. If it had not been for that punk, he would never have found himself in this position. A vast and mighty pressure still enveloped the burning spirit warlord, causing him to tremble in fear. Shaden was naturally in an even worse state. He didn't even have the courage to look Maximus in the eye. Maximus stretched out his hand and grabbed at the young man. Shaden was sucked forward by a tremendous suction force and was grabbed by Maximus. No, you can't kill me. My father is also an expert of the war god realm. If you kill me, my father won't let you go. Shaden pleaded, but Maximus could already sense the boy was pathetically weak. No matter how Shaden struggled, it was useless. When the burning spirit warlord saw this scene, he unleashed his battle energy. He could only think of how rageful Shaden's father would become if something were to happen to his son. Because of the eruption of the battle energy, the Burning Spirit Warlord was finally able to move his body. The combat aura condensed and turned into a huge energy beam that shot toward Maximus. Put down young Master Burke, the Burning Spirit Warlord shouted. Maximus didn't even look up. With a flick of his sleeve, the energy beam was stopped in the middle of its trajectory. Then it promptly dissolved. What? the eyes of the Burning Spirit Warlord shrunk. Although he understood the strength of a war god, this man in front of him had just broken through. He hadn't even stabilized his internal strength in seclusion, so he shouldn't have fully grasped the power of a war god. How had he just accomplished this feat? Maximus could not help but mutter to himself, so this is the vaunted warlord power, so weak. His evaluation infuriated the Burning Spirit Warlord. He had never been looked down on this way. The Burning Spirit Warlord was moved to threaten. You are a newly promoted war god. The leader of our sect is a legendary veteran war god, ranked 27th in the continent. Don't be foolish. You cannot defeat him. Do you really want all your hard work to go to waste? The master of the Thunderflame sect was famous throughout the southern region. Even among the war gods, no one dared to provoke him. The Burning Spirit Warlord thought that bringing up the sect master would cause the other party to retreat, but what Maximus said shocked him to his core. Interesting. It's funny you mention it. I have been looking for an opportunity to fight against a war god. Name the place and time. I'll be there. As for the person in my grasp... Maximus added, staring at Shaden in the eye. No, how dare you, the burning spirit lord interjected. His heart was filled with anger and fear. Shaden was the only son of the sect master, and he was extremely precious. But now, this vaunted son had been eliminated, just like that. The burning spirit warlord thirsted for revenge. Putting all rational thought aside, he thought of the glory that would come to him if he defeated a newly ascended war god. Holy flame, raging fist! He shouted. Scorching flames gathered in the burning flame warlord's right fist, and he swung out with a loud bang. At that moment, 
the entire world seemed to have turned into a landscape of flames. A cold glint flashed across Maximus's eyes. His aura surged out, and a vacuum was formed around him. As the flames fell, the entire void was engulfed. However, Maximus seemed to be somehow protecting and preserving the ancient gate realm, which was entirely unaffected. Is this all you've got? Maximus's face revealed a mocking expression. Incinerating spirit raging flame fuse! All stars return to ashes! The burning spirit warlord shouted in response. A flame that contained the destruction aura soared into the sky, and an attack that was like a burning meteor descended from the sky. It was shocking. The burning spirit warlord roared furiously. Go to hell! Maximus's expression was calm, however, and underneath the calm was a hint of disappointment. He mused aloud. So this is the strength of a so-called combat monarch. Pathetic. Indeed, despite his bluster, the Burning Spirit Warlord had just launched an ordinary Holy Realm skill at about 40 to 50% of its potential strength. It would have gone completely unnoticed in the Forgotten Continent. Shaking his head, Maximus lost interest in the battle. He threw out a punch. This punch was like a dazzling light in the darkness, piercing through the sky. It was also like a hot knife cutting through butter as it struck the energy field of the Burning Flame Warlord. He began to wheeze and flew backward. The force of the punch surged into his body and instantly shattered the battle energy vortex in his energy center. The burning spirit warrior's face was deathly pale, and his expression was filled with despair. Although the battle energy vortex had yet to be completely destroyed, it had been mostly destroyed. His internal strength base had plummeted on the spot. He was humiliated and filled with regret. He wanted to just disappear. Why? The burning spirit warlord began to utter before falling to the ground in a sorry state. He was wondering not only how Maximus had stabilized his war god level so quickly, but also why he had elected to spare his life. At the same time, the burning spirit warlord could sense that something even more extraordinary was afoot. No doubt, Maximus was no ordinary war god. He was something else entirely, something supernatural. Maximus naturally wouldn't answer the first question of the Burning Spirit Warrior. He knew well that the reason why his realm was stable was because he had already broken through to the inner precinct. The power of a random punch deployed by him was thus tremendous. That was because the Saint Origin's solidification speed had surpassed the first level of the inner precinct and was comparable to the second level. As for the second question, Maximus chuckled and offered. Do you think that what I said before was a joke? Of course, I asked you to pass a message to the master of the Thunderflame sect. That's why I spared your life. Let me see what this so-called 27th strongest war god in the continent is capable of. You, you will definitely die. You see, you have killed his precious son the burning spirit warlord spat out in a tone that was both confessional and hateful. The Thunder Flame sect was located amid an extremely tall mountain range in the southern region. The top of the mountain indeed reached above the clouds, and toward the base of the range was a raging sea of fire. The return of the burning spirit warlord in a miserable state caused an uproar throughout the sect. In the main hall of the sect, the higher-ups gathered to hear the warlord's tale of woe. The eight great warlords were not on good terms with each other. Thus, as they listened to their peer, even though they displayed expressions of grief, right below the surface, they were gloating in their hearts. The news about Shaden landed differently, however. All of them were shocked, and they now understood the gravity of what had just transpired. Surging anger and killing intent rushed out. Sweat appeared on their foreheads. The Sec Master interrupted their thoughts, however. With his heart filled with uncontrollable anger, he spat out crazily. Good, 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 good! I have been a war god for so many years, yet this is the first time I have been challenged. And by the newly advanced war god at that. What gall! Let's see what he's got. Because of his anger, thunder and flames burst out from the Thunder Flame Sec Master's body. 
the thunder and fire almost destroyed the entire hall. The other war gods present worked hard to suppress them and save the structure. There were a total of three war gods in the Thunderflame sect. The sect master was called the Thunderflame Warlord, and he had both lightning and flame attributes. The other two warlords were respectively the Vermilion Lotus Warlord and the Blazing Sky Warlord. A glint flashed across the eyes of the Vermilion Lotus Warlord. He ventured, The sect master, do you mean to say? The Thunderflame Warlord interrupted, Yes. I will accept the challenge, and we will fight here, within the Thunderflame sect." The Burning Sky Warlord smiled, then chimed in. What an arrogant idiot. He better have some remarkable trump cards. The Vermilion Lotus Warlord then interjected. But what if he doesn't have the guts to show up? The Thunderflame Warlord's eyes were cold as he reasoned. I will invite the leaders of the various four-star powers of the Southern Mountain Range to watch. I will also invite some of the other five-star powers warlords. If he doesn't come, his reputation will be ruined. The Vermilion Lotus Battle God took a deep breath. This was too cruel. Defeat was one thing, but the ruin of one's reputation was another. On the other hand, Maximus had asked for this treatment, so he remained silent. After making up his mind, the Thunderflame Warlord sent an ordinary warlord to Ancient Gate Realm. Because this messenger was an ordinary warlord, the sect would get the message that the Thunderflame Warlord didn't really take Maximus' challenge too seriously. By the time the messenger arrived, Driss and the others had mostly recovered from their injuries. Yassine stated with a guilty expression, This is all my fault. We've now become the number one enemies of the Thunderflame Warlord. Driss added, Maximus, the Thunderflame Warlord is despicable and shameless. He has demanded that the battle take place in his sect territory. You will surely die if you go there. Maximus waved his hand, then commented, Yassine, you don't have to feel guilty. This is all part of my cultivation process. I need to challenge other battle gods. And I said he could choose the location, so I will go with whatever he chooses. Yassine and Driss opened their mouths, but they did not know what to say. Maximus laughed, then added, Look at your expressions. It's as if you're looking at a dead man walking. Don't worry, my friends. Meanwhile, in the Green Emperor sect, which was located in the northern region of the Battle Energy Continent, the Green Emperor War God was intrigued as he heard the news of the challenge issued by Maximus. Ha! <laughs> a new War God has been born in the southern region, and his identity is unknown. Quite interesting. And apparently he is fearless. Well, I've been pretty bored lately, so I'll go and take a look. He abruptly stood up and ordered some top members of the younger generation to follow him, so they could learn a lesson. He was ranked 23rd among the continent's war gods, and had been born with the Green Emperor Star Flame. His presence at the battle was a sign of its importance. <laughs>